In the GMBN Tech Weekly Show, we quite often look at bike caves. You know what the bike caves are, it's where you store your bikes and where you fettle with them. So today, I thought I'd show you around my little bike cave. Check this out. Now, most people's bike caves tend to be like a garden shed type thing, um, or a garage if you've got one of those. Now, I wasn't fortunate enough to have one of those, but when my partner and I bought this place, um, we need to renovate it. And we spent the last two years completely gutting and rebuilding this place, including where I'm sat right now. Now, originally, this was an outdoor toilet. There was a wall here with the tiniest little window you can imagine, um, a little door, and then next it was a coal bunker to feed the fire that once existed in here. And then there was a whacking great concrete roof connecting it to the main part of the house. Now, one of the benefits of this was there was a huge concrete foundation underneath, which meant I didn't need to have plan permission in order to use that foundation. I just needed to meet building regulations. So we made some plans for the ideal sort of bike cave so I can keep all my bike stuff in here and not in the house. Um, they got approved and we built it, essentially. Now, it was quite cool because we had to take off the five inch thick concrete roof, which was full of rebar. Um, we had to cut it with a steel stone cutter and basically smash it to pieces uh, with, a with a massive uh, sledgehammer and whack it all off the side of the building. Rebuilt it, insulated it, put this window in, which is the old kitchen window, put a new big secure back door on here. Um, everything is great. I've got everything I need. I've got all the storage. There's storage in the eaves above where you are right now. I've got all my bikes down one end. Let's take a little look, shall we? So starting at this part of the room here, I've got my bikes hung up on the wall. Now, a lot of people have asked why I hang them up without the wheels on them. And it's simply to save space. If I have the front wheels on them, it does fit in with the ceiling, no problems at all. I catered for that when we built the place. However, it does mean they take up more room pulling out into the room. Now, it's not a large space, so I wanted to maximize on everything I could. Um, now, I have got a storage unit with a load of old archive bikes and stuff in it. At some point, we're going to delve into because there's some very special bikes tucked away. But these are my work bikes. These are my GMBM bikes. So I've got my Canyon Neuron here, I've got my Nukeproof Mega, and I've got my Lux. And then over here, I've got these really cool old IKEA units. So this one used to be red and I've spray painted this and I keep all my GMBN kit in here. I've got my glasses, my gloves, all that sort of stuff. Uh, riding kit below, there's various things in this one, <laughs> including a bottle of Moe, just, just like you do in, in your bike caves. Um, various sort of camelback bladders, things like that. Waterproof jackets, all my sort of kit I need for winter. Underneath here, I've got a little unit that I built from old kitchen sideboard stuff left over from when I put the kitchen in in here. So I've got all my riding shoes here. Uh, we're obviously, we're supported by North Wave, so I've got loads of latest North Wave shoes. Works out pretty good because they suit the way I ride. Got various locks and stuff. Um, you might notice I've got a slam ball here. I've got a balance board and various other exercise related stuff. And I've got leftover sideboard from when I basically built this place. So I managed to get three pieces for a bargain price. I've used this on the end here, and as you can see, I've got helmets lined up. Um, the black and white one is my daily that I just use to commute to work. The blue one is my new one for videos, and the black one is a spare for when I have friends that come and ride and just need a spare helmet. It's always good to have one of those lying around. Um, yeah, so that's that corner. And then if I move over here, there's all sorts of junk and all sorts of cool stuff. There's various things I'm sure you can see straight away. So I've got Kush core set up, in here i've got loads of old spokes in this box here in fact actually all sorts of stuff in here some old xtr cranks um, some pretty ancient bergtech pedals these are called these are called penthouse flats uh, of course rat boy and everyone uses like the modern versions but these are some of the originals look how thick those things are pretty crazy and then uh this is quite cool so uh, don't need to worry about that stuff pair of prototype race face cranks um, I spent my entire working life basically as a journalist. I worked for Mountain Biking UK magazine for a very long time. So I've always been testing kit and riding other people's kit throughout the years. Uh, it gives me a good balanced view of what people are making, how it rides, how accessible it is. Um, and to a large degree, it's why um, I fit in well at GMBN Tech and why I can give you the information that I do is because this is what I've always done. I've talked about bikes forever. I've got some classic old brakes. In fact, I've got some customs here 
from uh, from the Avid days and from the SRAM days as well. We go got some Avid Exo brakes, Dodd on the lever, that's pretty cool. Loads of cool old stuff. I pretty much seem to keep hold of most things I've ever used. Um, if it can be useful, if I can use it in a video, if I can help a friend with it for broken parts and salvaging, I'll pretty much keep it. Um, I'm a bit of a hoarder. It can be a bit of a problem, but also, um, as I found out in a lot of GMBM videos done, it's actually pretty useful. Remember these? RockShox Totems. So these are seven inch travel, 40 mil stanchions on them. Uh, these ones are kind of, the anodizing's gone a bit funny on them over the years. Some homemade stickers from back in the day, ACDC and Goonies, but uh, that was a hell of a fork. A 1.5 inch steerer tube, so that's uh, quite cool to see actually. Up here I've got uh, some random retro stuff in here, so let's have a look. Let's see what we got. An original uh, specialized helmet from back in the day. Before the really cool helmets we have now, you used to have lycra covers on top of basic polystyrene helmets. Um, certainly not very cool and they look like a mushroom. So uh, when you wore them, not good at all. There's that ACDC jersey that I wore in the uh, retro versus modern video. Oakley Fox skins, pretty classic glasses from, uh, from the 80s. Remember those things? Ooh, pretty stylish. Don't think I've ever worn those. I think they're pretty much box fresh. Let's have a look in my tool chest because this, it's actually quite a lot of sins in here because it's quite a mess at the moment. I keep meaning to sort this out. On the top, as you can see, there's uh, there's all sorts of stuff going on. A load of media passes from over the years, uh, you know, mountain biking UK here, 2014 Sea Otter, various World Champs, World Cups and stuff like that. This is quite cool actually. This is an old helmet it has been crashed in. Um, a really old Troily Designs D2. Um, Owen from Slick Graphics did these Doddy graphics on the side. They kind of look at a glance like it's part of the paint job. Pretty cool, useless now, you know, it's, it's been crash damaged and that, but just for old time's sake, and it looks quite cool. And I've got most oils, lubricants, the things I need for the sort of jobs that I like to do on my own bikes. Fork lower lube, shock oil, I've got Shimano mineral oil in here for doing disc brakes, and polyfiller, anyone for a bike? Right, now let's go into all the sort of sins, shall we? So top drawer, this is the bad one. No one goes in top drawer, except me, fortunately. Um, it's a right old mess. I've got so many duplicate Allen keys here that have lived in the car and all sorts. I really do need to sort this out. But something very cool. There's a present that was given to me by Calvin from Park Tools. Um, I always love a good pick for working on stuff. Uh, this one's from a Marzocchi trip back in 2007. It's a Park Tool still. Got another Park Tool here with my name on it. Uh, next drawer down, uh, knives and screwdrivers, stuff that's generally used on other DIY stuff, not really in the bike world. These are quite cool actually, these are for cutting tire knobs, um, literally for uh, cutting your tires down if you fancy doing that sort of thing. These are quite cool for uh, cutting hoses, like a mini cigar cutter. But this one was actually given to me by, in fact, I didn't say given, I took it from Alex Rafferty. Um, I loved it. Thanks Alex for this by the way, Alex from SRAM. Um, Really nice little tool there. Uh, this one's got a few more park tools and bike tools in it. Again, jumbled in with another selection of stuff. Various files, I've got some, those Epic Solutions, fork top cap spanners here. These are various bearing drifts. Uh, that's an Eastern number 24. Uh, these are all for various different hubs than that I've had over the years. Next one down, there we go. That's starting to look a bit more familiar to you guys, isn't it? Some various park tools in here, of which actually my favorite is the, uh, the disc rotor straightening tool there. Again, a few more park related things in here. Um, these are for setting the crown races on forks. That's the rocket tool. In fact, that's an old rocket tool for inch and eighth uh, for knocking out headset cups. Forgot about this bad boy, Abbey Tools Hammer. So this is a titanium hammer. This thing is immense. If we go on the road, it's kind of a useful one to uh, carry because it's nice and slimline. And also actually probably the most useful tool right now on mountain bikes is the park internal cable route tool. That thing has stopped me swearing more than I normally would. Really, really flipping good tool that is. This is cool actually. Enables you to use your, your drill, go around corners. Okay, so I've got my workbench here. I've got a nice big vise here. This is uh, an adjustable angle one. Um, it's not in the best position to be fair because I was gonna move it, I just haven't got around to that. These park magnetic trays are absolutely amazing. As you can see, I've got all sorts of nuts and bolts and stuff chucked in there. Got me trusty uh, leather mechanics gloves. Um, these are carpenters ones. Use those all the time when working on the house. Stop getting massive splinters in my hands. 
uh, well used Makita impact driver and drill setup there. Impact drivers, one of my favorites. These things are amazing. Um, you can see there's a bit of a state on the top here on this shelf. There's all sorts of random stuff here. Uh, that's an old Bontrager, well, in fact, that's a new Bontrager mug. Uh, looks, looks old, it's from uh, Bike Ninja. And inside, uh, randomly, some got some old knives. So this one was, I did a press trip to Out Duez and it says Oz Duesan on here, and it's an Opinel knife. It's in disgusting shape, actually. I haven't used that for years, but uh, don't really need to. This one was a present from Raceface way back when I visited them in Vancouver. Um, those guys are really cool and they had these little lock knives. Um, don't really need to use it for anything. It even says uh, Raceface, say hello to my little friend. That's an old vintage fork. That's an answer Accutrax. To some, it might just look like a, like a rubbish old fork, but actually it's um, a nice bit of history. Now, artwork is something I'm quite into. I'm quite into obviously my bike history. So this is from Repack. Repack was the first ever official downhill race, the one that we all knew about. It's called Repack because it was so fast that the coaster brakes used to heat up and the grease would be pouring out the bottom. They had to repack their coaster brakes with grease, hence Repack. And that was from Charlie Kelly and Joe Breeze, their signatures there. Those two guys alongside Gary Fisher and Tom Ritchie really are pretty much the founding fathers of what we now know as mountain biking. This is really cool. In fact, I'm gonna to have to dig this bike out and show you. I was lucky enough to do a trip to Intense, which are based in Temecula, California. But essentially, I got to design my own geometry bike and Jeff Steber made it for me. And look at the numbers on this. There's a double XL. This is still big by today's standard. Wheelbase 1240, reach 518. Back in 2014, I was all about the big bikes. This one is my favorite all-time rider. That's John Tomac. Doddy, go hard, Tomac. To me, like as a kid growing up watching mountain biking on the TV and all the magazines, Tomac was the one to beat. Inspirational guy. Um, you've probably noticed there's all sorts of other randoms on here as well. Petey's Last Orders. Um, some Steve Pete World Champion beers. Uh, that's from 2009 when he finally won. I think everyone in the mountain biking world was absolutely stoked with that. Uh, got myself that Tioga disc drive clock, thought like we got one at work, I had to get one for my own little bike cave. Um, my old computer, my old beloved thing, I can't throw it away even, it barely works now. But it's good enough for Spotify, good enough for a bit of surfing, YouTube, stuff like that. While I'm working on my bike, I can watch the World Cups and stuff like that. And in fact, I've just seen up on the back here. <laughs> so this is a shot of me taken in uh, Lee Quarry up, in, um, up north. That's by Russell Burton, I think, and the bike was a Banshee, in fact, it would have been called a Mystic because at the time you couldn't call them Banshee in the UK. I think it was a Spitfire, quite progressive. Um, didn't have that one very long. But what I've just noticed is this print underneath. Now this, I need to get framed. That is Sean Palmer, uh, Ari in Sw um, Sweden even. 1999 World Championships, that's the finish line. He pretty much slid across it. A crash just before that finishing line and he didn't win the race. I uh, don't think he would have won it, but we'll never know for sure. Uh, but he signed that and originally I was going to give these away, but this one was the one I was going to give away, but I've actually kept for myself. The other one, which he also signed, he hadn't actually seen this picture by Jeff War. He kept it for himself. So Palmer has the other one of these in his house, which is quite cool. Uh, what else is there? There's, uh, there's also something else I've just seen here from my MBUK days. So uh, this was a gift when I left the magazine. So if you've ever read Mad Bike UK magazine, you might know about Mint Source. Now Mint Source to me is a bit of an institution. So he's a mountain biking sheep. Now this is an original piece of artwork. You can see by the texture and stuff on this. Absolutely amazing. So that's Coleman the cow. Um, just Mint and Coleman in this particular one here, but it's absolutely fantastic. I love the artwork. This one's quite funny. This is when he's riding tubeless for the first time. His tube doesn't seal. Ends up with gunk all over himself. But I love Joe Burt's artwork. Absolutely fantastic. You can see this stuff on Instagram. Uh, Vesio Joe, I'm um, gonna put a link to him underneath. He is the guy that does all this artwork. It's absolutely fantastic. But uh, yeah, I'm super lucky to have those. I must get those framed. Um, Joe, if you're watching this, thank you. You're an absolute legend. That's definitely two of the coolest bits of memorabilia I've had from over the years. Absolutely love mint sauce. That's me without a helmet. Oh, not good at all. That was me as a fridge magnet. And that's the bike that essentially got me my career. I think I've talked about this before. Snapped the forks on that one and broke my face, uh, thus giving me my uh, marvelously good looks. 
but uh, got me a job, so I'm pretty happy with that. I had a lot of covers over the years. Here we go, so this one, that's me, that was taken in Bootleg Canyon in Las Vegas. That picture, that's a Russell Burton picture, I believe. Check him out on Instagram, amazing photographer. Some of these would be questionable, I think. Actually, that's quite cool. That's on a Mondraker, that's at the Forest of Dean. Uh, so that's 2014, that's a fair while back as well. Uh, that's quite cool, I think that's a Steve Bear photo. Um, that's another Russell Burton photo, doing a skid for a puddle. It looks pretty cool, doesn't it? I feel very fortunate to have, have had front covers on such a sort of prestigious magazine. Uh, I think that was my last major cover of them. I think I left in 2015. Um, and that's actually a really good one, really like that. Troy Lee clothing, uh, Zero shoes, riding on a 29er Specialized. Um, pretty cool. As you can see, I've got stacks of pedals, in fact, from some modern ones that I ride now, some really old ones, some very thin ones, some very battered ones. Um, but for some reason, did I tell you I hoard stuff? I can't throw stuff away, something wrong with me. Down in this one, this is kind of uh, some random retro stuff. That's when SRAM did their pink limited edition stuff. That's pretty cool. Titanium springs. Um, oh, look at that, that's the first ever quad catcher. Old Eastern flat pedals, they're pretty cool. MRP Ultra Speeds. Oh, we've even got carbon ones. Oh, look at that bad boy. Hope brakes. So they are six pot brakes, I think, these. And I had the laser etched brake levers to go with it. <laughs> got a Zonic Hammer stem. Look at that thing. That's pretty much just a whole lump of billet aluminium there. May just look like a, a coder stem to you, but when you take an angle grinder to it, you turn it into a, into a bottle opener. You can pretty much make a bottle opener from any bike part. Um, I think I did that in one of my home hacks videos. Okay, and then I've also got my little top drawers here that have, uh, they're quite organized, although it looks a little bit messy. I kind of know where everything is. Uh, and this back one here, I've got volume spaces for various forks and shocks. I've got foam rings, anything sort of suspension related up there. I've got various different tubeless valves, valve cores, bearings and that from back ends, bushings from shocks. Uh, in here, I've got some lights, O-rings, brake pads, uh, staff angled nuts, cleats, old cleats, new cleats, uh, various different chain master links, all sorts of stuff that comes in handy. Always keep this stuff. And lastly, I kind of keep waterproof jackets, apron, various different riding packs and that sort of stuff on this wall here. Uh, I've got quite a cool Park Tools bottle opener here, so if I fancy a cheeky beer when I'm working on my bike, it goes in there, that catches the bottle tops. Down here I've got like a little wash station, all the sort of usual sort of things you need to keep your bike clean. Um, but something that's very cool just behind my workstand here is this. So this was a present from Steve P after he won the World Championships way back in 2009. So Doddy and all at MBUK, thanks for all the support over the years. Cheers, Steve P, World Champ, 2009. Um, I absolutely love that I've got this. This is one of the coolest things. It's obviously not the jersey that he actually raced in. It's a replica of that, but it's been under the pen of Steve P and it was a gift from the man himself. Uh, super cool, really, really nice to have this sort of stuff. And then just above here, there's all sorts of stuff up here as well. So up on the top side here, I keep all my tires, spare tires, that sort of thing. Up here, I've got full face helmet. That's actually an old helmet that's crashed. I need to get rid of that one. And up on this side, I've got my big douchebags bike bag, I've got cable reels, and I've got various suspension forks and other bits and pieces stashed up there. I use this bar, this is pretty good for chin ups and stuff, but it's also good to hang my wet clothing on when I come in, let it drip dry in here, reproof it. As I say, I use this room as a utility room for looking after my bike kit, not just looking after my bike. So the whole aim is that none of that stuff ever has to go in the house, which means the house can be quite cool and quite different to my bike cave. Um, well, there you go, that was uh, my bike cave check. I guess you could call it a bike cave check. Um, I'd love to know what you think of it. Um, there's probably some bits and pieces you've spotted in some of the footage. Uh, let us know if you've got any questions in the comments underneath. And more importantly, let's see your bike cave entries. We do get some really good submissions already on the weekly GMBN Tech Show. I'd love to see more. I'd love to see some smaller ones. I'd love to see some sheds. I'd love to see people keeping bikes in the loft. Literally, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. It's just cool if you have a little house for your bike. So keep them coming in. So for a couple other videos, 
Click down here if you want to see Martin Ashton's Pro Bike Check. That was our first feature that ran last weekend over on GMB and Tech, or actually the weekend before, I might be lying there. And click down here if you want to see Neil's Garage Tour. Um, a little bit different, he's a bit more rustic, shall we say, than my bike cave, but uh, it's all good. It's all cool stuff nonetheless. Don't forget to give us a huge thumbs up here at GMB and Tech, and um, don't forget to share and subscribe. See you later.